All right. So I've done some grinding off camera. This grid is basically just the very foundation of this project. I am going to use this to stand on to place trap doors along here so that I can place sand on top of those. And then when the time comes where I have placed enough sand, enough of a like giant cube of sand, I will then destroy it with a piece of TNT and a flame bow. And then it will all drop on top of this ocean monument. And uh, hopefully everything will go according to plan and my world won't get destroyed. Uh, which I know has happened before, doing this exact same thing. Uh, and then I will have a drained monument, kind of. Uh, there's still some light draining to do and little areas that don't get hit by the sand. But generally, I will have a monument to do with as I wish. So the thing about that is, it's going to cost a lot of sand. Like, more sand than I even realized at first. I thought it was a 32 by 32 square. It's actually 60 by 60, a 26 block tall, 60 block wide, 60 block, um, other word for wide, cube of sand. That is 96,600 sand. The desert nearby to my house is going to be looking pretty deserted once I'm done with it. I got all of these signs and storage. This is like half of what I need, probably less. Currently, in my statistics, I have 55,040 sand mined and 36,697 sand used, which is sand placed. Also, you may notice I didn't properly announce it in the last video. I have a new skin. It's me. I'm currently uh, finished writing, but not done, not started editing the first episode of this series. The, that's right, the first, where I, you know, go to the end and stuff, beat the dragon. By the time this video is out, I'll probably have, it'll probably be around June. It is currently March 20th, 2024. I'm, I'm saying 2024, because I don't know, this video could be coming out in like six years. Because uh, this, this is a big project. I'm probably going to be at this for at least two straight months, if I don't like get totally burnt out. And you know what, frankly, thinking about like what I got to do for work and stuff, and then how I gotta schedule out all my time to fit this and also work on the upcoming videos and then like the like my upcoming normal videos and also getting the other Minecraft videos done. I'm gonna lose my marbles. Uh, but yeah, I will be grinding at this basically every day and I will have a very pretty DokuCraft sky to look at. Take the DokuCraft mod pack, delete everything but Optifine and the sky folder within and you'll have this. Uh, I originally wanted to use a dedicated uh, sky texture pack, but uh, I couldn't because they all fucking suck. Like, they're all so goddamn ugly. Uh, and this one's pretty. It's especially pretty at night, which you'll see in a minute. Uh, but yeah, I've actually been using it for a while. I just haven't mentioned it directly. So here, I'm going to cut to a montage of some sort. That or just more voiceover if something interesting happens. Uh, so I'll see you then. So I've now done the base layer, and I've gotten rid of the netherrack grid down here. So really, all that is left to do is just to mine up an insane amount of sand and then place it all. So I'm using, um, I'm just going to get some sand to demonstrate here. I'm using a similar strategy 
that I used for building the sand like wall things when I was draining the ocean. I'm going to go up here and I'm going to go to my keybinds and set right button to R. You can do whatever keybind if you're doing this yourself. And I'm just gonna do this for hours every day, single day. I'm probably gonna have like an entire TV show queued up and I'm just gonna work my way through that while I do all of this. Uh, because it's it's going to be mind-numbing, and frankly, I do not want to, you know, pay attention for that long. My attention span is far too shot to do that. Uh, it could result in a little bit of danger if I do, you know, at night and there's mobs everywhere. But generally, it's going to be pretty safe. It's really just time-consuming is the issue. I'm predicting this whole thing will take around a month, like at this point. Because the last time I did it, it took like two months, because I did this once before. Um, uh, I'm gonna sleep so the rain goes away. I did the, I've done this once before, but I, uh, that time I was doing it really inefficiently. So I was going in instead of uh, placing... I, I believe I was doing layer by layer, so I would just go like... One, you know, row by row, layer by layer. And that was uh, an even larger sand cube than this, so I'm thinking I could do this in a month, possibly even like two or three weeks, if I go, if I do like real hard commit to it. I'm generally not very good at committing to getting larger projects like this done on a small time scale, uh, but it will get done in due time. So I'm probably gonna uh, cut away to a very, very, very large montage of me Filling up on sand, building here, and repeating. I'll see you then, when this whole thing is done.
All right. So, you know when I said that this would take around, like, I think I said at least three weeks? Uh, since that last clip, it's been around 25, 26 hours. And I am almost done. <laughs> I got this little bit at the back here. I'm going to reset my controls because it's set to R. I'm starting to develop muscle memory for R being right click. So I'm going to collect a little bit of sand. Just I'm going to collect this up. I'm going to head back over here. I'm going to set my right click to R. I'm going to... So I found actually the key to doing this is to get a sprint going before. So that you can... Uh, because it goes way faster if you're sprinting. And yes, yeah, you can sprint while crouching. It's weird, but it does work. Um, also, if you're going to do this yourself, you're definitely going to want Swift Sneak. It will make it so much faster. And there, we're done. Wow. This is like... I don't know how this went so fast, honestly. And then I'm going to go get a piece of TNT. I was originally going to use a flame bow, but I don't really have a flame book on hand, so I'll have to figure something out. I'm going to get this piece of TNT. I'm going to go over and get myself a button. Stone button. And I'm going to place this here. Do not press that for now, because before I do anything, I'm going to leave the world, and I am going to make a backup. <laughs> It is critically important that I do not uh, accidentally leave this world as the only copy, and then it corrupts when I press it, and then I lose everything. Like, after this project especially, I'm, I'm gonna be mad if that's what does me in. I have made a backup of the world, so unless this literally, like, crashes my entire fucking computer, there should be no way that this could possibly fail me. Hold on. This will take a few tries. Wait. No, none of them technically hit. Now here's the jungle where I got all of the wood for this shit. Uh, this is like just for all of the signs. There. Do not press it yet. I'm gonna shoot it. There. That's it. Recording might crash. Uh. Okay. It's going. Ooh. One FPS. One slash zero FPS. Ooh. It's moving. Slowly. I, this is lower than one FPS. This is one frame per minute. Oh, is my game crashing? Nope. It's back. It was doing... It had a little... Uh, loading cursor thing for a second. Oh, it's doing it again. I'm hoping... I am I really just want this to go through on the first try. I don't want to have to load that back up. It's loading. It's doing the loading thing again. Like, it's crashing, but it's not. The block updates are, like, morphing together. It's not. It's not going super crazy, but it's still not working. <laughs> Look at that, it says Entities 32,000. Yeah, right, that checks out. It's actually more like 90,000 here. I think so. It's possible that my last last time I did the math, it was wrong. It's doing the, the crashing thing for a long time. Like it's crashing. I know it's not. I hope it's not. Whoa! My mouse moved. Weird. I really should have closed out every other program before I did this, because I have a bunch of shit open. I'm not, I am, I am not doing anything. I'm, my hands are off the mouse. Oh, big movements. Stuff's still clipping together, but it's not. It, stuff's, stuff's happening. I can see sort of the outline of the top. You can see it, you can see the light also. Oh, entity is 56,000. So I think when it, when it reaches 90,000 or whatever, it'll be done. I'm mad that my mouse moved, though. I wish it could have stayed centered. 
So far, my, like, weirdly, my recording has not had any lag. I would have, I, I honestly was expecting it to crash immediately, but no, this is just Minecraft lag. 65,000 on the entities. That's the little E colon thing. Looks like a really fucked up emoticon. It, it's tr pretending to crash again. There's, it's probably, there's probably gonna be, like, a few of, like, the slightest imperfections, and it's gonna piss me off, but it, it'll... It'll hopefully be okay. Still looking like it's crashing. Whoa. Big, big movements. It looks like you can kind of see the outline of where it's hit along the bottom. Also, I thought those were dropped, like, item, like, sand. Sand that had been, like, hit by, like, hit kelp or something. Uh, no, those are the arrows that the TNT blew up. My, my missed arrows. Whoa. Oh, you can see the outline now. It's forming. Holy shit. It's almost done. It's... Yeah, let's go. Oh, there's so many signs on the ground. Holy shit. It's... Is it perfect? It's pretty perfect. I'm... Holy shit. This is cool. I have there are so many signs here. It's killed so many guardians and squid. <laughs> and it I'm pretty sure it was perfect. No imperfections. So, I'm going to save some of these signs. I don't know what I would ever use them for. Maybe not ever, but especially not in this world am I ever going to do this again. So I don't know what I need would ever need these signs for. But there's a, there's a couple of things, a couple of farms that require large quantities of signs. So I'll just save a few. So, as uh, as far as future plans for this goes, I have a few. Uh, none of them are gonna be quick, you know, stuff that I can just get done, you know, as as a, a little tidbit. Oh, here's the button. Uh, none are gonna be stuff that I can just get done as a little tidbit. This is gonna be a big. This is gonna be its own video, possibly multiple videos. However. I do have another project for this video, back over by the Drained Ocean. Um, and it's probably going to require around a shulker or a shulker and a half of sand. I might get some nice shader screenshots later, but, you know. Big, big project. And I, I got it done in, like, 26 hours, man. That I did not expect that. I actually have not done, like, any progress on editing the episode one, just because I've been... I've been grinding this out. I played for like seven hours today. Maybe more. Technically more. I think I have like eight hours. Eight or nine. I'm going to work on other projects, but those are really going to take the back burner. This was just the big project I wanted to get done for this video. And now it's done. There's going to be a little more terraforming around the base because there's some parts that are a little fucked down here. Like like this. That's, that's going to need some doing. But other than that... This this phase of the project is done. I'm also going to have something that's going to take probably a video, but I'm going to then... Like, it's probably going to get its own video, and then I'm going to work on it over the course of the few next videos. So yeah, here it is. Uh, my FPS should hopefully no longer be tanking as bad when I'm in this area. I'm happy with this. I It is... Perfect. There is not an imperfection in sight. I'll probably be getting a bunch of glass just to preserve the shape of it. Uh, that's going to be one thing. Man. So I'm going to pop into voiceover, and I will see you in the next project I do. Whatever that may be. So I was thinking maybe for the end of this video, I'd do something else. Like, maybe I'd make the floor of that ridiculous drained lake from last episode all sand so it's more uniform. But instead, I think I'm just going to get the monument to the point where I can remove all of the sand on top of it. And then I'm going to do that. I started by trading with villagers. I need a ridiculous amount of glass, and I'm going to trade with librarians for the bulk of it. A villager trading hall would make this much easier, but I have some morals. And also, they're hard to build. I replace these torches in the workers' compound with lanterns. I use the taxes I collect from my citizens to improve their quality of life. This makes me better than the United States government because they use taxes to kill children. I flew over the monument and stopped to take a look at my creation, but actually I'm here to chop some jungle trees. I'm crafting more lecterns. 
I want to be able to sell out all of my toolsmiths with iron, and then sell all of that to librarians for glass. Eleven lecterns should do the trick, but I need to increase the birth rate. This bread will become hardworking men in 20 minutes' time. Speaking of bread, I started stacking some of that by selling to the toolsmiths. I've had plenty of time for iron to pile up while I've been doing monument stuff. Here I got a toolsmith who sold an Efficiency 3 and Unbreaking 3 Diamond Pickaxe. These are really useful for digging netherrack because you can just buy a bunch and work them until they break without worrying about repairing them. I then flew to a random village to steal all of their beds. Despite getting a home for each and every villager last episode, I am still making more, so I had to place them outside. I had a few enchants I wanted, but didn't urgently need, so I was trying to get some of those while re-rolling my glass librarians. Like here I got an efficiency 5 trade for 33 emeralds from a glass librarian. Here I gathered some sugarcane to have if I needed to lock in any villagers, and I found a buried ruined portal. Uh, the chest in it was garbage, and I went back to the village where I found a villager who had a shit trade, so I dug a hole in the ground and did him dirty. Not like that, Jesus! I killed him! At some point I got an infinity villager, and I already had him breaking three, so I just need power five and I'll be able to make a bow at a moment's notice. Some of my toolsmiths were selling it like 10 iron for an emerald, but honestly, it doesn't matter. If anything, I have too much iron. I definitely don't have too many fireworks, though. I had less than three stacks after grabbing some here. I do suppose it's around time I revealed the build. Here I was in the mesa because I wanted to get a core sample of the terracotta pattern. The build I'm doing is a mesa monument. I'm going to build a little mesa biome around it, make a shell of sorts with the sand outline of the monument out of glass, and replace all of the prismarine in the monument with terracotta. The glass is going to be vaguely mesa colors, but I probably won't copy the precise pattern like I'm planning to do for the terracotta part. I then went flower picking, how whimsical, and hopped into my test world. I kinda realized copying the exact terracotta pattern for the monument wouldn't look great, so I decided just coming up with my own pattern would probably look better. I considered integrating green glass and terracotta, but I settled for light gray, gray, yellow, orange, and red in a repeating pattern for the terracotta, and a similar pattern for glass. I returned to my world. I was planning on getting eight stacks of each color of glass just to start, but I'd probably need more later on, so I got two stacks of each die I'd need. I started flying home after taking out the final two stacks of fireworks for my shulker. I still needed some more flowers, but tried to stay close to home. After collecting everything I needed in the way of flowers, I flew home and started killing skeletons for white dye, then squid for ink. I flew around collecting some cactus and threw it into a furnace. I then converted eight stacks of glass I had already stockpiled to yellow, then another eight to red, and then I was already out of glass. After that, I was just on the glass grind. I was constantly buying glass, and when I wasn't buying glass, I was selling iron. I realized I could probably excavate more sand and build a furnace setup, and it might be quicker, but I've had enough sand mining for one video. I was running severely low on gunpowder, and I had to harvest my sugarcane, and after crafting three more stacks of fireworks, I was down to six gunpowder. I was then trying to go to the iron farm and accidentally went to the end before crafting down all of the iron into the farm into blocks. I let out even more beds for my villagers before grabbing my 55 emerald blocks I'm planning to turn into glass. Also, I grabbed that green dye from earlier, even though I may never use it. I started rerolling librarians and accidentally hit my mending guy with an axe. This guy gave me six emerald silk touch, he's in the crew. It's a bit pricey, but at one of his higher levels he offered feather falling four, which is nice if I need a new pair of boots. Power five for 37 emeralds, but I hit him with an axe, so it's 42. All I did was attack this guy with an axe, and I was asking for three emeralds for one glass. What an asshole. This guy didn't even sell an enchanted book at level one, but I leveled him up exclusively for glass. After that I got eight stacks of orange glass, nice. I kept leveling up librarians, I still need a lot more glass. I am already almost out of emeralds though, so I need to trade more iron. I was about to level this guy up who sold projectile protection one, but I realized that's worse than just paper and bookshelves, so I decided I'd re-roll them later. I soon got on my grind. In about 20 minutes, I had produced 20 stacks of glass and dyed them accordingly, including eight stacks of green glass, which I won't end up using today, but I might use them for something else later. I brought out all of the glass, and while having it all in my inventory, I realized collecting the sand while placing the glass might be a challenge. I was going to do these two blocks at the base of it, and after doing like 80% of the glass around the base, I realized I did yellow on top of red, but the order is red, orange, yellow. I also decided to wait to do the area around these arches until I've placed the glass up to the top of them. After breaking all of the yellow glass, I got to orange and made sure to put my chest plate on because if I back my ass up into a creeper without it, I'll pop a totem. Before you comment, I know there will be a few holes in the glass. I've already fixed them in the actual world by the time this video is out. I started placing the light gray and gray glass. It's in a weird spot, so I didn't do it in individual rows, but placing less than half of the gray glass, I ran out. I finished placing light gray, and I think I'll just keep placing all of the glass until I've run out of all of it, then restock. 
This time I needed a shit ton of red, like even more than I needed for gray, and so I'm out of that too. Pretty much as I planned to, I kept placing glass until I ran out. Placing some light gray glass pretty much at the top of the monument. I headed home to restock and oh my god, villager trading is so boring, Jesus Christ. I nearly finished the gray glass, but somehow ran out again. Though now you can kind of start to see the colors take shape and that should look good in the finished build. I went to AFK my creeper farm after that because I'm still in desperate need of gunpowder. Oh hey, this is my last recording of the video, it's over 4 hours long. Yeah, so I was AFK overnight and I overflowed my gunpowder farm. If my math is right, I was AFK for around 10 hours and with the rates of the farm my gunpowder overflowed after around 2. I'm back to glassing now, and I still need like 30 stacks of it at bare minimum. I left after getting glass for around 10 minutes, but I don't think my calculations were quite right. I'm gonna have a lot of extra light gray and not nearly enough gray and no yellow. I built up to the top of the monument with no fucking yellow before continuing on the red part, running out again, and trading even more glass. I didn't like the way this guy was looking at me, so I demolished his mortal being. I got some glass, but I still need gray, yellow, and red. I grabbed a rose bush and some bone meal to create more red dye. I didn't even know before this project, but apparently there's not a 100% chance of librarians offering glass, so if one doesn't have glass or any good enchants, I may dispose of them. I then finished trading for glass, and this is totally definitely the last time. Actually, maybe, I haven't watched all of the footage yet. I'm still worried I need more red, but if anything, I'm lucky I just needed a shit ton of red and not like yellow or something that I need to pick all of the tiny little flowers out in the middle of nowhere for. After finishing out the bit up top, I started filling in the area around those arches in front of the monument. After doing a couple of them, I went home, for once not to buy glass. I'm restocking on fireworks. I should have enough to at least finish out this video with all of these. I finished the arches, and I hoped the layered stained glass would create that cool foggy effect, but it really didn't. Filling out this front wall though, that added a lot. I then filled in these little structures along the back and realized I never actually got the bit of sand at the very top of the monument. I realized I completely missed the last couple of the structures at the back, uh, but I did fix them later, so uh, you know, no big deal. I flew back to the village to get a little more glass and completely forgot about those structures. I then filled in this funnel back wall and I am almost done with the glass. I took out just the tiniest bit of sand down here and I filled in the area along the bottom with red. And after digging the full rim out, I realized it was supposed to be orange, which I don't have any of, but I did have some extra glass and orange dye, so it wasn't a big deal. Actually, it kind of was a big deal because that glass wasn't enough, so now I have to trade for a little more. I then began the sand excavation, and if anything interesting happens, I'll let you know. So anyway, I finished the sand excavation. Yeah, not really. It was very uneventful, but there were a couple interesting things. I started excavating around the arches, and there's some of the few points where water remains after a sand drop, so I had to grab some sponges to deal with them. I never drained inside of the monument, so I just blocked the door off with some red glass. I really should have dried out the monument before the sand drop though, because now whenever I do dry it, all of the guardian spawns will be localized within the monument I'm going to drain. Frankly, in this part of the video, I probably spent about as much time shoving the sand in the storage as I did actually excavating it. Getting the sand around the top of the monument was a little tricky with the water, but again, it was manageable. More draining with these little structures at the back, but again, it was basically nothing. At a few points, I needed to place more chests on my little netherrack circle, but I will eventually get some permanent storage for the sand until I use all of it on TNT or glass or whatever. I then finished removing the sand. Yeah, that's the end of the project. I got a few screenshots here, but this is actually the end of the video. So, I'm aware I've uploaded three videos in the past month, counting this one, and I'll probably get episode 5 out sometime next month, but to be honest, I don't know how often videos will be coming out after that. I don't think I'll totally quit, but I'm getting a job soon and starting college classes at like the start of next year, so I'll have a lot less time to work on videos. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to be doing mostly videos like this one, which take much less time than my game analyses or even the fully scripted ones in the series. Alright, bye.